we like to clarify in Baba's Mulis. But one thing that stayed in my mind a lot was this idea of the checking machine. Baba said that in our offices we have emails, we have faxes, we have many types of machines, but now we need an internal checking machine. Confluence age is the true time. Everything to do with truth and falsehood is at its absolute extreme now. But when I become a Brahmin, I become a student of truth. The true father is speaking through the true instrument, Brahma Baba, at the true time, giving the truth for the true land. And so truth is a very big thing. And being students of the truth, of the living truth, then certainly I'm going to have to check quite a few things, the way I think, the way I speak, the way I feel, what my attitudes are. But is it an easy job or a difficult job? <laughs> or is it a joyful job? <laughs> well, it's joyful, but in reality, sometimes for some souls, it's a tearful job too. <laughs> but certainly, it is a work that I am meant to do and that I wish to do because truth is purity and on the basis of purity then happiness, peace, all those qualities of human life become something very permanent and very stable. Actually I was thinking of two things that are very important now at this particular time. Maybe there are many other things but the two things that came in my mind were to stabilize and to economize. To stabilize in what? To stabilize in my religion. Until a human being stabilizes in their religion, they do not have power. Because when a person stabilizes in their religion, they have an inner strength which manifests itself in great faith and courage and great surrender. A person who really stabilizes in their religion will never be disloyal. They keep the loyalty to their principles. So what is our religion? Our religion is peace, the first lesson. The religion of non-violence. That religion of peace where I, the soul, harmonize with my thoughts, my sanskaras, my intellect. I, the soul, harmonize with my body, with matter. I, the soul, harmonize with the other actors in the drama. And this harmonizing is our religion, the religion of peace. And it's when the soul stabilizes in that very, very deeply, then that is called liberation, freedom. The basis of liberation is peace, and the, and the seed of peace is truth. And I come into the awareness and the experience of that truth through the direct relationship with Baba, with God himself. And to keep that power of stabilization strong and permanent, there has to be, yes, economy. To, econom to economize the subtle energies of the self, thoughts and feelings. I remember Daddy once defined what it means, Sato Pradhan. A Sato Pradhan mind is the mind that will think only what it's going to do. There will not be many, many thoughts. Great economy in those thoughts. And actually, if we really want to accumulate subtle energy, 
And then that, that energy is then a, like a great reservoir inside the self and it will be very useful and very necessary for service. I need to economize. And to economize and stabilize, I have to check. Because the old habits penetrate the way I think and the way I feel and I don't see it happening. Maybe after a year or two years or three years, And when the old things penetrate the soul, then that's when there's body conscious attractions and there's a feeling of boredom, the lack of enthusiasm, many things happen. And of course, Maya is very wise. <laughs> she doesn't do it all at once. <laughs> it's little bit by little bit. So yes, my checking has to be deep and subtle. And what's What's the basis of this checking machine? Because actually the, the checking is going through the intellect. The intellect is watching and observing. But in a very calm state. Because when I'm very calm and when I'm very peaceful, then there will not be feeling of heaviness or paranoia or uh, fear of mistakes. Because checking, accurate checking requires detachment not to get too involved in it and just and the way not to get too involved in it is be very much in my religion of peace because only a peaceful intellect is able to check systematically and with lightness because if i don't check with lightness then i get stuck in what i see or what i observe or what i think i see So checking, <laughs> you like this word, we like it. Sometimes some people don't like it. <laughs> think it's too much work and there's not enough fun. <laughs> but there's lots of fun checking. It's like playing a game but being always conscious of the rules. But the ingredients of, nat of a checking which is natural and which in which the soul feels that it wants to do it, is three things. Awareness, alertness, and love. These three things make checking something that will become a natural sanskar. The awareness first of the self. I, the soul. And the original qualities of the self. I'll go into that a little bit more later. But the awareness of what I really am. And then alertness. The alertness is that there will be things that will try to interfere in my keeping that original stage. It can be habits, it can be other people, it can be situations. But inside the self, there is the alertness not to be too in absorbed in it, not to be deceived by it. And what makes awareness and alertness natural and possible is love. The love for the one. The love for the knowledge of that one. And the love for my future stage as Baba's server as Baba's instrument, as Baba's child. Where there's love, there's a natural enthusiasm and there is a natural interest to do what is right. There's not the feeling of compulsion or obligation. And then where there is this natural checking, there will be like a Trimurti process taking place. There's creating, there's sustaining, and there's transforming happening. All three things are happening. I'm creating in the sense of emerging those original qualities again and again in front of the intellect, in front of the self. 
and also the feeling that Baba is helping me to see those original qualities and inspiring me to become those, to experience those. If I don't check properly, I will not be able to create new experiences. I'll have new insights. And once created, of course, then those new experiences or new insights or a new level of consciousness has to be sustained. And probably that is sometimes a rather difficult thing to do because sustenance is very much linked to dharana. How much I practice very deeply, then that will certainly give the soul those spiritual skills that enable the soul to sustain itself. Because even something very good and very great that is created or that comes, it can disappear after some time if, the, if it's not sustained. So I have to check that I do sustain it. And it may be that I have to check my patience, maybe that I have to check my detachment, whatever it is. But the aim is to keep myself in the experience of whether it's soul consciousness, whether it's the relationship with Baba. Whatever it is, I have to keep myself alert and awake. And then transforming. Baba sometimes uses this phrase, check and change. Yes, I'm transforming. And what happens as you feel you are transforming? Maya is no longer a threat and I feel very safe and very confident. This is the proof of transformation. A growing sense of confidence and self-respect that nothing will defeat me, not even my old self. Transforming doesn't mean to keep hammering eh? the self. I have to, oh, this has to change, this has to change, this has to change, this has to change. Because yeah. if you keep hammering the self and calling this transformation, you get a soul ache. <laughs> Not headache, soul ache. <laughs> and what's a soul ache? Uh, I'm tired of this. I don't want to hear any more classes. Uh, you know, we know what to do. And I don't want to keep hearing the same thing a hundred times. And soul ache means when, you know, I, it's the, the loss of being uh, a child involved in this wonderful game of transforming you know, a child always keeps the wonder of things. So, if I, if, I, if I get a soul ache, I lose this capacity of wonder and, and interest. So, how do I transform? With happiness or with an ache? Because each one has to see that for themselves. And certainly when Baba is speaking of checking, he certainly does it. He certainly means that we are refining the self daily. And in that refinement, then there's a lightness that enables us to really fly and become his number one companions. The angels are his number one companions. The prophets, the saints, they may be number two, number three, number four, number five. I don't know. <laughs> but the confluence age is that time when we are offered this opportunity of having a real partnership. Baba spoke about it this morning. Partnership with the bestower. And in, when that aim is really creating an enthusiasm in the self that yes, a partner with with God himself, this enthusiasm of Brahma Baba. And so this is why he paid a lot of attention 
on his checking. What is it then, what is it that we do have to check? What is it that we have to look at? Again, it's, it could be a number of things, but three things. The original stage, the achievements that have happened, and thirdly, what still has to be done. And I always need to check all three. Because sometimes when we think of checking, we only check the last one. <laughs> what we still have to achieve, what we still have to do. And you know, if I only check that, I can become very imbalanced. I over-focus on what still has to be done. And sometimes, you know, when souls over-focus on what still has to be done, when they have this drive for uh, perfection, they start to become unrealistic in the efforts they make. And when they become unrealistic in the efforts they make, that's, that's when heaviness comes in and also a certain carelessness and even laziness. So all three are necessary at the same time. Well, maybe not at the same time, but uh, one certainly will follow the other. For example, let me check. Check, that is, um, appreciate. Let me come into the awareness again of my original stage, my original qualities of the self, the soul, those soul conscious qualities that will always keep me in well-being. Love. What's love? I'm a loving being. To be soul conscious means I'm a loving being. What is a loving being? I share and I care. Peace. Peace is my eternal religion, my eternal power. What does peace mean? I harmonize. I harmonize with all things and all people. Happiness. The power of happiness. My original state of being, especially when I'm in relationships with people, is happiness. And what is happiness? That, yes, I relate and I share with others. And purity, I am originally a pure being. And what's the expression of purity? I respect. Where there's purity, there's again a respect for the self and a respect for others. There are many things in this original stage. I'm the original child of the father. I'm the original old ancestor soul and old actor in this drama. And what is original is eternal. It's just that I have forgotten it. And to regain this original awareness, Baba, Baba has given me a word or a direction. And that word is remembrance. Not meditate, remembrance. What? <laughs> when you think of meditation, you think of a technique more, you know? Look at this point, go to that point, create these thoughts. Remembrance is different. Remembrance has to do with a natural relationship. What I remember, I absorb into myself. Of course, this can work in a negative way as well, but when we're speaking of the original, we're speaking of the original relationship with, with the Supreme Soul. And I simply have to remember that one. And as I remember, 
then the sanskars of that one become clearer and clearer and clearer to the self. What was Brahma Baba's effort? It was remembrance, solitude, deep solitude. And that solitude in the depths of one and experiencing that one in a, at a very, very personal level. Because until I really experience and keep experience, experiencing this original stage, there won't be the the interest or the power or the sustainability. I cannot sustain uh, checking and changing. It's only when I begin from the original, the positive and the best in the self, then there can be transformation of the weaknesses, of the negativity, of the old habits. There's not another way to do it, really. I mean, I can, of course. But if I start from the other way first, what's weak and what's negative, then I will not be able to check effectively. And I'll avoid doing it. I'll always find an excuse. Why do we, f why do we find excuses in making those changes? It's because I'm starting from the wrong angle. So the angle I need to start off with is the, the enjoyment, and the awareness daily of this original relationship with Baba and myself and my destiny in this drama. And the method for that? What's the method? The early morning hours. <laughs> we know it, eh? <laughs> it's not a new thing. But in the early morning hours too, the soul is absorbing the original vision of God on the self, on the soul. And if I'm able to position my mind and heart in such a way that, that I'm able to be sustained by this, then I feel full at the beginning of the day. We always need this fullness at the beginning of the day, not at the end. At the end of the day, it's not possible. And Baba wants us to jump. Hmm? Not to be down here struggling and battling. Because sometimes people think that effort and checking means, that, you know, struggling and sort of, now when's going to be the next big battle? <laughs> no. It's not actually to do with battling, but it's always feeling the experience of victory. And Baba, when, you, when we experience Baba's companionship and that Baba is with us, then um, that experience of victory is not something abstract or far away, or it's not just a hope. I, yes, I am victorious because Baba is with me today and every day. And so I need to check my level of faith also. Do I believe it or half believe it? Or I believe it only on Thursdays? <laughs> Can I measure the faith? <laughs> or I believe it only when I have good company and there are others who have the same aim. Faith is faith. It's got to be always. But it's again, it's got to be re-energized. It's got to be um, always there. And that can only happen if I make that time and that space every day for, for this relationship with Baba to become very real and very natural. People like these words, real and natural, in terms of spirituality. But for that, I have to give my time and my attention. And Baba does the rest. And the second thing, achievements. What have I achieved since coming into this Brahman life? Should make a list. <laughs> what have I achieved? 
something obviously. I've let go of many things. I've made many adjustments. I have had many good experiences, many inspirations. Um, many good things have happened. And when I appreciate how far I have come, when I do appreciate the achievements that I have received as a yogi, as a child of the father, as an actor within this drama at this time, then I am happy with myself. I can pat myself on the shoulder and say, good, you've let go of lots of things. You know? The habit of getting confused or the habit of easily getting angry or the habit of judging and labeling others, they've gone. At least <laughs> to some to some extent, <laughs> if not completely, it doesn't matter. But there have been achievements on the basis of knowledge, on the basis of dharna, and it's not only I who should appreciate that, but certainly Baba appreciates it, and drama as well. And to to appreciate also means to have seen and recognized one's own specialities. Because when I see my own specialities, I stop comparing and I start learning from others. Daddy was saying yesterday in her class, to compare means to lose your fortune. And when I don't remain conscious of my own achievements or my own specialities, this is when I get too involved with others. And once I get too involved in others, I lose my, not just focus, but I lose my ground, I lose my balance. And then I fall and then I have to be picked up. Someone has to give me courage, someone has to give me hope. So, sometimes it's very good to do these little exercises like, yes, make a list of what I have achieved in my Brahman life since I've come. And thirdly, what I still have to do, what I still have to achieve. And how do we know that we still have to achieve things? How do we know? Hmm? Look at Baba, yes. Pardon? Yes, when there's a lack, when there's a shortcoming. Yes. Yeah. When you get moody, when there's wasteful feelings, when there are bad feelings, when there's confusion, when there's dryness, when there's boredom, when there's etc, etc, etc. Then I know that there's still, there's still, there still are things that have to be done. Mm -hmm. When I look my, at myself in the mirror, yes, of knowledge. <laughs> when I look myself in the mirror of knowledge, in the mirror of drama, in the mirror of relationships, and there's disturbance. Hmm? Disturbance is the subtle feeling of sorrow. And the subtle feeling of sorrow can be even a lack of fulfillment in some way or another. Or others may even complain that they're receiving sorrow from me. Daddy Kumaka described once the, her, her aim is karmatit stage and the karmatit stage means not giving sorrow to anyone so that no account is created. So full peace and full happiness and full love. This is what has to be yet achieved. But Baba gives us time and Baba gives us himself so that we are able to do this and this is why in every day he gives the same direction every day keep looking at me 
keep looking, look at me, understand me, be with me. Just keep looking in that direction. And then that's when we become equal, gradually, gradually becoming equal. This is what the Father wants, to have those similar sanskaras, because his sanskaras are our inheritance. The inheritance of complete love, complete joy, complete purity. And so the drama is always a bestower. Baba is the bestower and drama is the bestower. Baba is very lenient. Baba is very loving. Drama not always. <laughs> Yeah, is it? Drama is situations and people. And they're not going to be always sweet like Baba, understanding like Baba, and say, oh, it doesn't matter later. Okay, Baba doesn't say later, Baba's always saying now. <laughs> but, you know, even if we don't do it now, he's still very accepting. Drama, no. Drama says, really, now or never. And this is why when we sometimes we're in situations with certain souls that really test how far have I moved in tolerance, in patience, in detachment. If we don't have those tests, if we don't have those signals from drama, then uh, we stay where we are. So drama checks us also. And this is why, if I look at drama properly, I see her really as my, my friend, the one who's bestowing awareness on me. Because sometimes we just do not have the realization of certain things. Hmm? We all have particular sanskaras. Eh? <laughs> we have very good ones. <laughs> and of course, they must be very good, otherwise we wouldn't have woken up and recognized Baba. But there are some sanskaras that require very deep recognition. And that deep recognition I have found in my own experience, sometimes it just doesn't come from me because just don't see it. Just don't see it. And we may, we may be telling others, you know, this is the speciality of teachers, you know, we're telling others what to change, but <laughs> we don't change it in ourselves. We may t for example, we may tell others all about the details of attachments or the types of egos and things like that. But in many, not sometimes, uh, I cannot see that in my own self. And so this is why truth and honesty are very valuable tools on the path of checking and refining. And so people will come in my life, whether it's, the, usually it's within the Brahman family, but outside the Brahman family as well. But in the Brahman family you can't escape. <laughs> you know, you're living with people, you're interacting with people, service, all these things. and. We can. Sometimes people, what they do is they try to eliminate others. Eh? Not talking to them, you know, not avoiding, you know, diplomatic avoidance. Um, you know, there are ways. But you know, one thing too, if I have the sanskar of eliminating people or situations that I don't like, what eventually happens is I find myself isolated. I eventually find myself alone and the feeling of people not being at the family doesn't understand me. Whereas, in, you see, instead of eliminating, I should, should have started to use more tolerance, more flexibility, more patience, more forgiveness, a, 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 a virtue that enables my heart to be more open. And I think that's the whole point of checking, is that the heart is more open. Our intellect often is open enough. We know a lot. Because Baba's direction 
is the direction has been good wishes and pure feelings. For many mulis he has been saying this. Because where there are good wishes and pure feelings, many things will work out naturally and automatically. There's no need for the details of justifying, you know, what, what I really meant, you know. Someone reacts to what I say and then I'm trying to explain to them what I really meant. And they're not really listening or understanding it. But if I really had good wishes or pure feelings, then that will do the work silently and uh, in its time. And so what I still have to achieve, sometimes I don't have to go into the details of particular dhanas. Yes, sometimes maybe I do. But certainly this, this opening of my own heart and really looking how Baba serves with great compassion and he will give souls a chance again and again and again. If Baba didn't give us opportunities and chances again and again and again, where would we be? Where would we be? How many chances should Baba give me? Twelve and a half? <laughs> Ten? A hundred? Two hundred? But he, he sympathizes, he, he has empathy. <laughs> he realizes the depths of Maya and the tricks of Maya. And so a soul may be doing something again and again and again. And Baba keeps giving opportunity again and again and again. And, if he, and I have to again appreciate that opportunity that he's giving me. This is called regard and respect for the Supreme Teacher. And what, when you respect someone, you don't want to take advantage of them. You don't want to misuse them. You don't want to take up their time unnecessarily. To respect the Supreme Teacher means that I have, I have attention on myself and I want to become worthy. So checking, it's fun, checking's fun. And really, it's not all up to me. Drama will check me also. Actually, who checks? It's good, I start it myself, of course. It will be very effective and, and has very good results. But definitely, drama will make me check and the family will make me check. <laughs> So, uh, other actors in the drama will make me check many things. And if I can do it with a lot of respect for myself and a lot of openness, then it becomes something that is easy. And in the muli that Baba spoke about the checking machine, the next muli, um, he spoke about actually the things that we need to check, the look, looking at certain things through which we can check. Do you remember that? I think it was, the, I don't remember which date it was, but it was the Muli after the 31st. And uh, he spoke of five things, knowledge, yoga, dana, service and relationships. And how can you tell if all of these are working properly? You know, and he told us, for example, knowledge. If I'm really realizing knowledge and using knowledge as it's meant to be used and realized, then what's, what's the checking point? What's, what happens? Liberation. Is that liberation and liberation in life? Because knowledge is making me understand what is right, what is wrong. Knowledge is making clear the aim of my life. <clears throat> and knowledge is making me aware of the subtle ways that Baba works, the subtle ways that Karma works, the subtle ways that Maya works. And only when I'm really going to the depths of knowledge 
Am I able then to have that dharana which truly liberates, re- liberates the soul? Because it's not, it doesn't go knowledge and liberation. There has to be something in between. Eh? Because one thing is understanding, but then there has to be the dharana for the liberation to actually take place. And the focus of knowledge is remember the one and remember you are a soul. And see others as souls. This, this is the focus of knowledge. And if that focus is accurate, then there's always a feeling of freedom, liberation. Because remembering the Father will always give me power and strength. Remembering the self as a soul will always keep me in self-respect. I won't get involved in body-conscious patterns. And seeing others as souls, I will give respect. And And giving others respect is accepting their part within the drama. And once I truly accept their part in the drama, then I stop accounts. Of course I know this is easier said than done (laughs) because uh, someone's very difficult to accept certain people's parts in the drama, especially if they, you know, annoy you (laughs) or their particular sanskar is, you know, sends shivers up your intellect, you know. (laughs) And knowledge is something that has to be revised again and again. And I receive, when I receive the fragrance of knowledge through revision, then it becomes an understanding of what I have to do today. Why do we have to have muli every day? Why is that? Because it opens my intellect to, to be able to realize things. Because to hear and to realize are different things, as we know. But if I'm really using knowledge properly, then there's that sense of freedom and detachment. Because one thing that comes with, with um, the right realization is the feeling of detachment. And being, yes, being bodiless. I'm a soul. I'm a soul. I'm a soul. It's a very beautiful consciousness to be able to remain in that. And the second checking point that Baba gave was yoga. And what does yoga do? All powers. All powers. And the power of pure thoughts, the power of pure understanding, and the power of pure qualities of the sanskaras, all powers. And an interesting thing that Baba was saying is that there's still time to fill yourself with all powers. Do it now. So there's still opportunity. Yoga is, is the remembrance of the one. Yoga is the remembrance of, of the one who is now giving me everything that I need. Yoga is the remembrance of the one who is sustaining me, transforming me, and enable me to go beyond limits. And the experience of yoga is the experience of fulfillment in all relationships, not just one or two or three. Am I full yogi? Am I half yogi? And when a human soul becomes a yogi, then their whole karma changes. And they're taken from the limited, they are taken from having wrong perspectives, they're given 
a whole new fortune has opened for them because it's a totally new relationship and it is through this relationship with the father that then I am able to have new relationships with others because we are renewing relationships with humanity as well with our human family with the tree of the family tree we're renewing those relationships but all of that has to go through the seed first almighty authority and when Baba uses this word almighty authority I'm sure we get all you know, we, we have different images or different understandings that come to our own mind but almighty authority deeply content in unshakable self-respect and is able to donate to others also has, has those, those powers are able to be given in service and then dharma what was the checking point for true dharma yes complete virtues eh? not just one or two or three but complete virtues and virtue has to do with relationships with others if I'm a sannyasi, a sannyasi, I don't need many virtues. Just really, if I'm a sannyasi type soul, I just need discipline, maybe peace, uh, not many things. But <laughs> if I'm interacting with others a lot, I will, in which we are, because this is the family path, then I will need many virtues. And those virtues have to be used again and again and I have to understand each virtue from a different angle dharna dharna means it's it's the willingness to improve my relationships my vision my feelings for others it's something that uh, is non-stop because dana makes me a better person but it makes me a better person in in terms of my relationship with other people i can't have just dana for myself eh? or with just myself and we find that at different times certain virtues are more necessary than others certain personalities need certain virtues more than others hmm? for example if I'm a very uh, disciplined organizing type personality then I certainly will need the virtue of sweetness flexibility tolerance I have to see which virtue I need according to personality according to the personality of others, according to the particular task. So dana is not just a blind formula, you know, be sweet, be good, be flexible, be tolerant, no. Real dana means awareness of the appropriate application of how I have to apply these powers at this particular time. That is real deep dana. Because otherwise, you know, it becomes very pressurizing. You know, I have to be good, I have to be sweet, I have to be sweet, I have to be sweet, I have to be tolerant, I have to be tolerant, I have to be tolerant. Yeah. Sometimes good to know why and how. And then service. And Baba gave the checking point also for true service, which was? Happiness, yes. <laughs> when we're doing service, we are happy doing it or we complain. Why do I have to be the one always washing the potatoes <laughs> and the other ones give the lectures? <laughs> Why do I have to be always driving to the airport? Why can't somebody else do it? Why this? Why that? Why am I this? Why am I that? Where there's service, 
from the heart that is that I'm doing this service with Baba, not just for Baba, but with him, then there will always be happiness. Whether, it's, whether it is just to wash the potatoes, or whether it is just to drive to the airport, or whether it is to give the lecture. Because as we know, it's never the thing, it, the thing in itself that gives happiness. The show does not give happiness. That I'm showing, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. That's not what gives happiness. Happiness comes from right motive and integrity. These two things in service will always give the soul happiness. And that happiness fills the soul with power. And the proof of that power is lightness. Very deep lightness. And in that lightness comes the feeling, I don't do anything. The instrument consciousness on the field of service gives this feeling of, I'm not the doer, I am, I am being moved. And there is the, always the awareness of Baba being Karvan Karavanhar, the one who makes everything move, even makes me move. Who gave me service? Did I give it to myself? I may have volunteered <laughs> for a specific job or task. But a person who does service and keeps happy is always looking at the big picture of service. Not just what I am doing, but what is being done by you know, Baba and what's being done by everyone. And I'm happy to be a part of that. So where there's happiness and lightness in service, then one doesn't get stuck. Because once we get stuck, then the happiness of service decreases. And being stuck is when it starts to become mine, you know? This is my special field, this is my speciality. And really this consciousness of mine is very deep. Deeper than what we think. So, for example, how can I tell? How do I check myself? If I'm disturbed that somebody else is doing what I usually do. If somebody else... Um, um, is like trespassing on something that I thought was mine. When there's any disturbance on the field of service, usually there's a, there's a, a my and mine element within it. And I just have to make attention to think, this service is yours. And really this is not just a, a, an aspect of knowledge, this is a matter of very deep dharna on the service field, very deep, because it really liberates me. And I think this is why Brahma Baba sometimes, when you hear the daddy's stories, you know, how Brahma Baba used to make them do all different things at different times, never get stuck on one thing. So the sign of being a serviceable soul is of being a happy soul. Being detached, but also being responsible. How can you be detached and responsible at the same time? <laughs> Sounds a bit like a spiritual acrobatic act. <laughs> trusty. <laughs> if I'm really a trusty, both things will happen at the same time. And this is what guarantees happiness. In the field, on the field of service. And the fifth, relationships. Who are we serving? You know, we're not just serving the trees or the rocks. We're serving human souls. And when that service is done on the basis of what I have achieved, on the basis of selflessness, on the basis of purity, then of course others are going to give this, are going to give me blessings. Blessings comes from others' heart, from deep inside them, because they have been able to achieve something permanent. Not something that will last just for two or three days. And a a blessing doesn't put me in any type of obligation. I don't feel obliged. 
If somebody is praising me, maybe. You know, there's a difference between praise and blessings. You know, you, we speak of praise and defamation. Blessings doesn't have an opposite, does it? As far, not as far as I know. <laughs> blessing is a blessing. No conditions. Like, it comes from them, but from other people. It comes from drama. It comes from Baba. Hmm? Curse, yeah, sometimes they say curse. It's pretty strong. <laughs> Blessed. Baba blesses us also. We have found the long lost father. He says he has found the long lost children. <laughs> and so to have found the one we have been looking for, the one who has the purest love for us ever in the whole drama. No one can love us and serve us as purely as that one. This is a great blessing, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, the, the biggest danger that stops this refinement of our spirit and our consciousness, the biggest danger is routine consciousness. Yes, oh yes, Baba, I'm a child of Baba. Oh yeah, knowledge, I'm listening to the Moli. Yes, every day. Hmm? But it becomes routine. And then I don't feel that my life is blessed. It just becomes another pattern. So how to keep alive the blessings of being a Brahmin, being God's student, how to do that? Fresh thoughts, not positive thoughts, fresh thoughts. <laughs> we, have, we have to give ourselves fresh thinking. And fresh thinking is, a, an, is a, an injection that comes in the morning hour of nectar. When our thoughts are fresh, then we are refreshed. Fresh thoughts means thoughts filled with the experience of, spiritu of spirituality. Positive thoughts is a bit different. So when my thoughts are fresh, my intellect is also fresh. And there is, there is enthusiasm. Baba once said that blessings are the seed of service. The tree of service is the result of the seed of blessings because Baba's blessings for us, seeing his blessings for us, shows us what we are, but even more what we can become, the big potential. Hmm? When that potential is realized and used, then people give me blessings. People will not give blessings until I've used the blessings from Baba. And then the blessings of people, um, it just shows what the soul has achieved. And that actually the soul has achieved something. But there's no attachment to those blessings. It's just those moments of good feelings that come from others and they help us on our path. So blessings is something that others are able to give to the soul because the soul has achieved directly from, from Baba, directly from God. It's not just praise. Praise may be they praise a, a talent, or they praise a speciality, or they praise a task. Blessing is much something far, far deeper. And it's not just dependent on something human. So how to move quickly? <laughs> this is what we are all asking. Eh? <laughs> how to jump into that consciousness and remain in that consciousness? You know that consciousness is beyond even the thought of I'm doing effort. I am churning knowledge, I am doing service. To go even beyond that. And to be in that state of 
um, constant soul consciousness in enjoying that relationship with Baba as much as possible now. And one of the things is that I really have to be truthful. When I'm truthful, then the soul easily becomes light and easy and very flexible and free. Because tr truthfulness gives me perspective of everything. What is truthfulness? It's clean. Yeah? Clean motives, clean feelings. There's not the shadow of vices, the influence of vices. And of course, this takes its time. It doesn't happen straight away. And also the Om Shanti consciousness. I am a soul. Our, our number one lesson. Actually, we have three lessons. Om Shanti, Man Man Above, and Madeji Above. The self, the incorporeal self, the incorporeal relationship with the Father, and the perfect self in corporeal form. This is the three lessons. And if I always maintain, I don't know if that's the right word, lessons, actually. It's more to do with what I really am. It's more to do with states of, of consciousness, the soul, the relationship with the Father and the deity form. The more I have those in my awareness, then uh, the, the more that those qualities will come into me very naturally and automatically. And then I won't get lost in battling. I will see, I will meet, I will face, I will do, but I won't get lost in it. Actually, I think I'll finish here. <laughs> and if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, now's the time. <laughs> and then we can finish off with meditation, some meditation, longer meditation. Yes, because I can't hear from there. Checking and chart. Yeah. Can you say something about um, checking and writing down a chart? Or do you think that checking is also something that can happen or that happens during the day constantly? Yeah. So how important is it to write it down every mm. night? Okay. Mm. Checking is, um, you know, for example, traffic control is also a type of checking. I'm checking where my thoughts are going. I'm making attention to become introspective, to go inside and recharge. I'm making attention to get a perspective on my actions, on my interactions with others. So traffic control also is a type of checking. And now the checking where um, I write a chart, you know, at, um, What's, what really is a chart? You know, sometimes we get these charts with about 50 points. We look at them and we'll say, okay, next year. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say, what is an effective chart? How would you think of an effective chart? And I really feel it's related to thoughts, words and actions. And just looking, you know, thinking. Am I thinking less? Or am I still going into unnecessary expansion? I, I, you know, to check this, the, my thoughts. How do I? How am I creating thoughts? Are they really soul conscious thoughts? Is it necessary for me to think about this? You know, sometimes we do this. We we over plan. Eh? For example, when we're planning things, or when we think we want to help somebody. Hmm? Thinking this, thinking that, thinking the other, it's not so, is that all necessary? So that first one of my thoughts, because the thought is going to be the basis of everything else. So I need to check, that has to be something that I need to check all the time. 
then my mind becomes lighter and stronger and more serviceable. Now, checking my words. Baba actually said this in the other Muli, in the, one of the recent Muli says, make your mind incorporeal. Well, incorporeal, a point. That is, bring things, I bring things to their essence again and again and again. And this is the way that there is accumulation and economizing. This is what Mr. Make the Mind incorporates. So that I need, I, I check it. I need to check it. And then words. What, how do I check the words? And he said, egoless. Egoless words. That is, do I use a lot of I-ness? Do I use a lot of force? Do I manipulate my words so that I convince others of what I want to do? Yes, some people are very good with words, very clever with words. They debate well, they present things well. That's one thing. Secondly, maybe instead of 10, 15 words, one word is enough. Hmm? I remember this sister coming to me once, you know, and she's complaining, you know, this soul is doing this to me, they won't let me do that, they won't let me do the other, this, 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 what to do, and you know, and I just, you know, I was just thinking, you know, what to say to her, because it's always the same thing coming <laughs> again and again and again. You know, because if you discuss it, it, go, it doesn't seem to work. If you say things to support, it, oh, finally it doesn't work, because the soul is not meeting her own sanskara. So I think, what words to say that are not, you know, to sh I don't want to show that I'm fed up with it. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, say something genuinely that can be helpful. So I realize, you know, I remember just looking at the soul and just look, just be silent, just go into yourself. And if you just study a few of the things that you write down in the morning. Everything's going to work out. Just practice some of those things. Yeah. Just in a few words. But also, there was the right feeling. And the soul became very calm and thought that was a good answer. Whereas before I used to, you know, 20 minutes talk or something like this. So, my, my words need to be um, appropriate. My words need to be um, compassionate, but at the same time, uh, not lost in details of uh, unnecessary, you know, unnecessary stories. And not to give the wrong type of support, because sometimes when you speak too much trying to support a soul, actually you're um, strengthening their, their weaknesses. Whereas if you just direct them to what they have to do, you know, silent, inside, just be aware of some of the things Barbara is saying, and this will help a lot. But I have, one has to mean that when one's saying it. Not that one says it just to get rid of the person, you know? <laughs> so do I mean what I say, as well as it being compassionate and respectful? And then my actions, you know? Are my actions done in order to bring attention to myself? Are my actions appropriate to the situation? Could my actions be less? See, the chart of these three things, what mainly it's doing is trying to increase the quality, the spirituality of these three powers we have. And usually the way that we increase the spirituality and the quality of these three powers is less. Less. Less thoughts, less words, and less, well, I don't know about less actions, but I mean, <laughs> at least the actions that are done are done with quality. It's not so much less, but quality. And stop the overthinking and the overreacting. So, a, you know, a, an effective chart will be centered on this, really. Yes. And of course, the, the remembrance of the friendship that I, the soul, have with Baba. There should be a checking, how many times do I remember that friendship during the day? 
or am I just lost in lokic relationships? Okay, another question. Any other question? I'll write it down. I, I think uh, writing um, is uh, if you are inspired to write it, it's always useful, and sometimes the discipline of writing it is always also helpful, unless you are able to do it by yourself without writing it down. But uh, sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Um, depends on the person too. I think it's good to actually do it from time to time. Okay, my thoughts, my words, my actions. But I, w you know, I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary for everyone. Excuse me, can I ask one question? Uh, bear in mind I'm very new to um, in Ga Ga, is that right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, naturally I find myself involved with a lot of, um, as you say, it's very family, I mean, not to be sannyas. Yeah. But uh, I find it very difficult when uh, I'm looking for advice, you know, I mean, all yeah. right. Most of my friends obviously are quite Scottish and like to go to the pub on a Friday night and yeah. all these kind of things. And I find it a bit difficult, but I also don't want to be isolated. Mm. Got any words of wisdom to do with it <laughs> apart from drinking and this orange aid? Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, uh, Baba often speaks of this balance of the lokic and the alokic. And the, the, the first way I can keep that balance is, first of all, I start to really understand what is important for me. Yeah? What really is important for me? Do I want to go out with the old friends again and discuss useless things? Is, is it really going to get me anywhere? So once it's clear for me that it's not going to get me anywhere, then I won't lose myself in useless conversation. Then um, maybe I can connect with them on another level. It doesn't mean that connecting with them on another level I speak of spiritual things. Not that. You know, about soul, about karma. They look at you as though you come from another planet. But, you know... How's your health? What's the weather like? <laughs> you know, um, still we have to be social with people. So these things are, you know, one has to be able to interact on that level as well. Just not to go into unnecessary extensions, to know where the limit is. So it's not that, oh, not this and not that, but the wise limit of things. Right? Because I can be speaking to some people, some old friends, but then if they start to say, okay, let's go here and there or whatever, and you know that it's not going to really be of use, then say, give a very good excuse. Or you say, okay, well, let's go home for a cup of tea and we can discuss at home rather than anywhere else. And one thing too about advice too is that um, advice has to be taken always from the right people. Because if you take advice from the wrong people, you get up sometimes in a worse situation than what you were before. So if I want advice on my health, I go to a doctor. I don't go to the carpenter. <laughs> if I want to build a shelf, I go to the carpenter. I don't go to the doctor. So again, my own level of wisdom to know where to go to for what.